Okay, it says we're live. Testing this out. Okay, alhamdulillah, we are live, but uh, I didn't broadcast you yet, Sheikh Yasser Qadi, so you're, uh, you can sit tight for a second. I'm looking at the YouTube video, and it looks like we should be in good shape right now. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inshallah, everyone is uh, is doing well and everyone is excited for Hajj. I'm seeing uh, how many people are online. Uh, let me make sure, uh, one second, just to make sure that this works so that there's no. Okay. Uh, publish. Let me make sure that was working. Save changes. Okay, return. Let me try now. It seems that people are saying that the link was listed as private. So just give me a second, everyone. I just want to make sure we I make it public so that everyone can see it. I just made the change now. For some reason, it defaulted. Now it seems to be working. Everybody's saying they're on. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So we'll just give it another minute just for that little uh, blip for everybody to catch up. I'll message the different WhatsApp groups so that everybody can um, everybody can get back on because they were saying they were clicking. The link 
is live now. Okay, so that to that group. Yeah, it was the setting. So sorry, everyone, about that. Okay. Alhamdulillah, salatu was salam ala rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Just so that we can go over the format of the call, bi'ithnillah. Again, we don't take too much of the... Uh, too much of your time tonight or depending on where you're at in the world, the United States or whatnot. The format of the call, the, the agenda, what we're going to be covering is uh, you're going to get Sheikh Yasser Qadi first. He's going to go over uh, some essentials around your uh, journey coming in. Inshallah, most of us are leaving within the next couple days, less than a week for the most part. Then after that, we're going to cover just a few things. One, we're going to go uh, uh, after he covers the overview of Hajj and explain Umrah. We're, and then we'll allow for time for questions and answers. If anybody has any questions, please, please do us a favor and write your question in the comments section of the video. And uh, so Sheikh Yasser Qadi has access to that link and he'll also be able, um, he'll also be able to read the questions off of that. Once we uh, finish any of the fiqh related questions, anything logistics wise we'll cover at the end. Um, and if anybody has any questions in that regard. Well, with no further ado, uh, I give you Sheikh Yasser Qadi, our teacher, and may Allah allow us to uh, benefit from him. And again, don't forget to write your comments, uh, your questions in the comments section. Zakhmullah khair and Tfadla Sheikh Yasser. Okay, uh, so we're uh, going to have Sheikh Yasser Qadi, inshallah, reconnect with a, uh, with a different uh, device. In the meantime, so that we don't waste your time and you guys aren't sitting idle around, I'll, we're going to switch up the agenda a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover some logistics to, uh, to begin. So, um, and then Sheikh Yasser Qadi will come towards the end. 
The first thing I will say is that what we continuously do, first of all, I just want to make sure can everyone hear me just in the comment section. If somebody can just uh, write in the comment section, if they can, they can at least hear me. So we know that it was, uh, it wasn't the, the YouTube broadcast. Okay, alhamdulillah. So what we're what we want to cover quickly is the itinerary. Uh, almost everything we include, as most of you know, is the shared link to the itinerary. We made some changes. Alhamdulillah. As most of you know, uh, what we're doing, we've created WhatsApp groups. The first thing I will tell you, the biggest change we've done since the WhatsApp group. Hang on one second. Okay, Sheikh Yasser Qadi is uh, back on. So, Sheikh Yasser, we're just going to cover the uh, logistics real quick, and then we'll have you come on, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. So, now that's got to solve the problem. Okay, inshallah. Go for it. Bismillah. Um, and so, the biggest change that we've made um, logistically is we've updated the Sacred Journey uh, Hajj itinerary. And so, what we included there is now there's a table of contents it allows you to go through the uh, it allows us to go through the packet a lot easier the whatsapp i just want to make it very very clear if all of you please if you go to the whatsapp group under mobile communication requirement the use of whatsapp there is a pink link hold on one second so there's a pink link and it right under that it tells you what group you're a part of you can click that and you'll see whether you're part of group 68 through 71. Once you click on that, there is a link for every one of you. Is there an app for Sacred Journey? The answer to that is no. We're using WhatsApp. WhatsApp is going to be our communication all throughout. And that we want to restrict it to logistical and fiqh related questions. So if you go to the itinerary that we've sent, um, if, if you scroll down to mobile communication under there, there's a subcategory uh, using WhatsApp. You could click, there's a link there, which would take you, it's sorted by last name, I believe. You find your name, you'll know what group you're in. And then there's four links. The group leaders are listed under every one of those links. Like for example, group number 68 is brother Sofian Qadi, and he's the group leader for group number 68. You would then click that link and you'd automatically get joined to uh, that logistical group. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions up to there? And just with all due respect, Allah reward all of you. Uh, we're going to have an excellent amount of brotherhood between the brothers and sisterhood between the sisters on this journey. The only thing we highly request is that you please reserve saying that, hey, how's everyone? Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all excited. Things like that. And the reason is, is because. The amount of people that are in these groups, we don't want anyone muting it because of text messages like that. All right. So I've been trying to remind everyone who's joining uh, and I just kind of keep copy and pasting that little reminder. So that's just a heads up for everyone. The So does anybody have any questions up till that point for the WhatsApp communication? Looking, I'll give it a second just to see if any questions populated. Okay, I'll continue. If I see a question, I'll pause. If not, the, the last part I want to just um, uh, reiterate is two things. Uh, some people asked for some clarification. There was a met no, Telegram is not needed. So thank you for asking that. We're no longer going to be used. We don't want to confuse anybody. We decided we're sticking with one app. That is what we were going to be using, and we're not using Telegram. So thanks for asking that question, uh, Ashraf. Next is the some people ask for clarification as to what you can actually bring in the from from uh, the Azizia apartments to, to the Mina camp the answer to that is you can actually bring your backpack you have to pack your 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 you can have your carry on stay at Azizia however if you have a larger type suitcase that has to get sent with Brother Fatih over to Medina. So I want you to imagine this quick. You're usually allowed two checked in bags and a carry on bag. And then uh, most people have a backpack as well. So you're gonna be given a backpack as a gift from Airlink. You'll also be given a shoestring bag, you know, those uh, string type bags, the tote bag. You'll be given one of those as well, right? 
uh, and then you'll have a carry on bag of your own that could have wheels or whatever. And then you'll probably have your checked in bag, which typically uh, has to be less than 22 gra- kilograms or whatever that is, that m- amount that it is. The ones that are a carry on that are the smaller size, you can leave them in Aziziyah. Or after we're done with Hajj, you come back and you have some change of clothes or you have things that you want to freshen up. With. The larger ones, they're going to get sent over. You do not have to worry about it too much now because we're going to cover that logistically when we're in the Azia. Well, I just wanted to give everybody a heads up in case for when they're packing their stuff. You're welcome, Sister uh, Shoa, for asking that, for the clarification. No problem. Okay. The other things we added to the itinerary, and then we'll wrap up there. I'll see if anybody has any questions. Um, is the 21-inch luggage considered the carry-on luggage? 21 inches considered carry-on. You can keep that in the Aziziya. But again, remember, you're still not taking that to Mina. And we'll, we'll cover those details when we get closer anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much. Can you send the phone number of the driver that will pick us up in Jeddah? Uh, boy, do I love you, brother Messer. That's not how it works. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a good laugh, actually. So, no, uh, I don't know if you've ever done hedge before. Yeah, so Kadi will go over this in more detail, but I will tell you that we get bus in and out, and we're going to need a lot of patience. Um, there is no driver, but per se, but uh, Dada Salam, who's an overarching uh, logistical mama bear here uh, for us, they will schedule our buses and sometimes we wait a couple hours. That's part of Hajj. And, you know, I'll leave that part to Sheikh Yasser Khan to give you a little bit of details in, in that regard. But there isn't any dedicated bus driver and like that, anything like that uh, to, to answer that question. Okay. And then the other thing I just want to remind all of the brothers, please, 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 please. All of the brothers, the main thing I want to reiterate is do not forget your ihram clothing that's been shipped to you with your package. Please pack that in your carry on. Do not put it in your checked in bag because at your connecting flight, typically that's where you'll change into ihram and that's where you're going to do that. Brother Masood says, so no limo. No. <laughs> well, the limo is relative, right? So maybe for some people that's considered limo. Somebody said, for women of old age, do we need a foldable chair in Jeddah airport while we clear immigration? Uh, this is a tough one, right? Because I want to make sure you, you guys are all aware of this journey. We try to reiterate this all throughout in communicating. Is a this is a tougher type of a hedge package in all honesty. So there's a lot of standing, there's a lot of walking. Uh, it's not like those luxury ones where you're paying ten thousand and up. This is a very kind of bare bones type one. So if you think that do you need to get a foldable chair, I wouldn't even know how you'd pack such a thing, honestly. But um, I, I don't even know where to answer that honestly. Maybe we could ask Sheikh Yasser Ali, but. Typically in the airport, there's a lot of standing. And if you don't have a place to stand, we're just sitting on the floor. So uh, previously, uh, the last time I, I did Hajj, we sat in the airport for about three hours, believe it or not. So that's just how it goes, right? Sometimes the bus is there earlier. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes they're waiting for another group of a judge coming in. And that's just how it goes. So there's going to be a little bit of wear and tear. And it's going to be uh, somewhat exhausting. Exhausting. So a foldable chair uh, i don't know but we did tell people that this is going to be um you know a little bit more difficult will the same whatsapp group be, be used for all communication the answer to that is yes okay so by the way the heads turn all packages are the same doesn't matter if you're okay so sheikh yasir qadi uh, added that part so you guys can read the comments he mentioned that up until the airport part the all the packages no matter what they're all the same. And he'll obviously reiterate that when he goes over as well. So I see some people commenting in the WhatsApp groups. I purposely just, and just so you're all aware, I'm going to add Sheikh Yasser Qadi to those WhatsApp groups. All of you will see him in those groups. I kindly request, please, and I humbly request. Uh, he's muted right now, but he'll comment afterwards. But out of respect to the Sheikh. Just please, please, please keep your messages very concise. I know you try. most people try to give backgrounds and they want to give them the full details. If it's personal, 
then you can uh, let me, you can message uh, myself and we'll get that question over to him or uh, he'll answer if he wants you to send it to him directly. That's up to him. But again, keep them very, very concise because there's other people on the in the group as well. I'm adding him about a day or two before we depart. So he won't be added unless he requests otherwise. OK, so he'll be added to all of your different groups. Just make sure you're in the right group for logistical reasons. Here's one. In case you decide to skip the eighth and stay in Mina, will there be a uh, conveyance or taxis available on the ninth to go directly to the plains of Arafat? This is where I'm going to say, I'm glad you asked that question, Mas Siddiqui. What I'm going to tell you in this regard is if you move away from anything we put forth in the itinerary, right? That's going to be our guided book throughout the journey. If you move away from it, this is 100% on your own. Please don't contact us. Oh, where can I get a taxi here? Where are you guys here? Where are you guys now? Our itinerary is the goal behind the itinerary is to be as detailed as possible. So all of you get the absolute best experience of Hajj you possibly can. That's our goal. If you decided I wanted to go shopping, if you decide, oh, you know, there's this really cool place everybody told me about, I want to check it out. That is up to you. And you're more than welcome to do that. That's up to you. But we are obviously not recommending you do that. Okay. Uh, to a few other logistical ones. And then there's a fifth related question for Sheikh Yasser up there. So I'll leave that for him. Uh, I am in the last arrival wave from 9 p.m. on the 5th and scheduled for Umrah at 3 a.m. in the morning of the 6th. That okay. Would the group leader, if we get delayed at the airport, would the group leader, if we get delayed at the airport? So I'm not sure what that means, but we have a person assigned to every wave. There's three waves of of uh, of all of us 170 ish people coming in, and there's a first wave. We have a person that uh, we have a brother that's going to be leading that group for Umrah. There's a second wave and there's a third wave. If you're in the last wave, uh, so you will be scheduled for 3 a.m. Okay, you're saying, wait, group. will the group leader wait? Oh, will the group leader wait? Oh, no, 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 don't worry. The group leader is on. Alhamdulillah, we, we arranged it in a way. There is a group leader with the last group. So you will have a group leader with you guys. So you don't have to worry about waiting. Okay. So they'll be with you. Question for Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Okay, that's for Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Next, you mentioned during Jamarat we will be able to go to Aziya if we wanted to as it gets closer. Will we be staying in the same Aziya apartment? The answer to that is yes. Your room is your room until we depart for Medina. Fiqh related question. Okay, so now other Fiqh related questions are coming in. So we don't, I don't take too much time so that you guys can also benefit from your Fiqh related questions. Any other logistical questions? Going once, going twice, okay, sold. I'm going to mute myself. I'm still in every one of your groups, in the WhatsApp group. So if you have logistical related questions, please let me know. And in that case, with no further ado, I'm giving you our teacher, Dr. Yasser Qadi. Let me unmute him real quick. Okay. Fadl Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Okay, salam alaikum. Can you hear me now? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, okay, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa wala ahma ba'd. So I don't know why I changed computers from downstairs to upstairs. This is not my actual office, by the way, so I'm... Uh, uh, using another computer here. Uh, so Bismillah. So I wanted to uh, begin by first and foremost, once again, welcoming all of you to uh, our program. And I ask uh, Allah Azza wa Jal to make our Hajj easy. And I request all of you as well that one of the du'as that we should be making from now, before we even go there, one of the du'as we should be making from now is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala facilitates our Hajj makes it easy for us, allows us to perform uh, the rites in a manner that is pleasing to him, 
accepts it from us and allows us to return safe and sound to our families. So start making this dua from now. It is a very important etiquette of safar, of dua as safar, that you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your safar, your travel, and to make it easy and to make it accepted and to cause you to return safe and sound to your families. Uh, to reiterate, we're not going to be doing too much of the fiqh of, of Umrah right now, but I wanted to mention one point that uh, uh, our brother Bakr uh, had mentioned, and that is that make sure you pack your ihram, sorry. Okay, suppose for whatever reason you don't have your ihram. Suppose for whatever reason uh, you're not able to access your ihram, whatever happens. Remember, ihram is a state, not a cloth. I said this in the fiqh class. Ihram is a state, not a cloth. So what do I mean by that? If you, for whatever reason, don't have your actual ihram, you still must enter the state of ihram by saying the bayk Allahumma la bayk, by announcing the talbiyah, by saying, oh Allah, I intend to now go to your house and perform hajj and umrah, uh, umrah, tam, uh, umrah hajjat and tamattu', whatever wording you use, hajj tamattu' is fine, umrah that is going to become a hajj, uh, you know, going to do tamattu', all of this is acceptable, but the point is, you need to verbally announce in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are now intending to do the hajj. If you, for whatever reason, if I have this pant and shirt on, and for whatever reason, I don't have my actual ihram. If I say before landing in Jeddah, and you have to say this before landing in Jeddah by around 10 minutes or so, and like I said, you can even do it before 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. If you're going to go to sleep, you know, when you get to the airplane in Turkey or or, or uh, Dubai or wherever you're transited, you're even allowed to enter before, no problem. But if you cross into the miqat and you cross over and you land without announcing the ihram, that is a much larger penalty and you will have to give an entire dam, an entire animal as a kafara. However, if you announce by your tongue the bayk Allahumma hajj tamattu' the bayk Allahumma umratan you know, uh, uh, that we're going to do hajj as well and you say it but you are wearing a panted shirt in this case, the kafara is just to feed six people and it is not to, to give an animal. Giving an animal is around $150 feeding six people is around 15 20 dollars or a little bit more than that there's a big difference between the two and that is because entering the state of ihram is wajib but falling into a mistake of ihram it is a much lesser penalty so even if you don't have the actual ihram make sure you verbally enter the state of ihram that is the important point i wanted to uh, reiterate inshallah ta'ala and of course as for sisters uh, it doesn't matter what you are you know wearing your regular clothes uh, uh, if there is a sister that is wearing a specific niqab or a specific gloves these are the things that were, are going to be uh, different for her and she has to redo her niqab uh, but i think the majority of sisters that come from the western lands they don't wear niqab so that is not an issue uh, i'm not going to go over a detailed class of uh, the fiqh of, of hajj because you should have listened and read and we will be doing that actually uh, day by day and inshallah in Mina. I just wanted to make sure all of you have memorized the four main arkan of hajj. If you do these four, everything else can be made up. So you need to memorize these four. If for whatever reason you do not do any of these four, then your hajj is incomplete and nobody can help you. No kafara, no dam, nothing you can do to make up. So you have to make sure you memorize these four arkan because that is the most important aspect of hajj. The first of them is the announcement or the talbiyah. We already said this that you have to announce that you are doing the Hajj and you have to make the, the Talbiyah and have the Niyyah to go for Hajj. Now in our case, as we said, we're doing Hajj Tamattu' and so you will do this when you enter Mecca, before, sorry, when you enter Jeddah, before you're entering Jeddah, before the Miqat, and then once again, you will do it on the 8th, the morning of the 8th, when you depart from Mina. These are, because you're doing two actions, remember, you're doing an Umrah, and then you're doing the five days of Hajj, and that is Hajj Tamattu'. So you make this intention, which is the Talbiyah and the intention of Hajj, and inshallah, everybody's going to do that because yani, it's understood here, everybody's going to be in the state of Hajj, and especially on the 8th, you're all going to be entering Ihram, you know, the whole uh, the whole hotel, the whole Azizia building is going to be, you know, busy and whatnot, and so that's not, inshallah, going to be an issue. Uh, the second thing is that you must physically be in Arafat uh, on the, uh, the day of the 9th, 
and make sure that you are there uh, basically up until the sun sets. So uh, you can arrive anytime. Sometimes some people uh, are late and that's acceptable. It's not a problem if you come at after Dhuhr. The Sunnah is to be there before Dhuhr and inshallah we will be there before Dhuhr. Even if you arrive after Dhuhr, no problem. Uh, but you have to be in Arafat uh, on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. If you are not in Arafat on the 9th and you miss Arafat, then there is no Hajj. Our Prophet said, it's a very simple hadith. You don't even need to know Arabic to understand it. It's two words. This is an authentic hadith. It's in Sahih Bukhari Muslim. It is two words. Al-Hajju Arafa. Al-Hajju Arafa. Hajj is Arafa. Al-Hajju Arafa. All of the Hajj is summarized in Arafa. If you don't have Arafa, if you're not standing in Arafat, then you have no Hajj. Now, one of the reasons I'm saying this, my dear brothers and sisters, is that in the very, very unlikely event, in the very unlikely event that you lose yourself from the group, you don't know where the group is, I said many times, do not panic. Have some money with you, 100 riyals, like $30, and follow the crowd. Everybody's going the same place. You do your Hajj, you will meet us somewhere. Don't worry, don't panic. There will be food and water. You'll be able to purchase it. You know, worst case scenario, even if you don't have money, people will give you food and water. It's hedge. Inshallah, you will find generous people. Don't panic. Continue in your ibadat and make sure you do your uh, arkan. So you have to be in Arafah. Suppose for whatever reason you didn't get the bus. Don't worry. Figure out another way. Walk if you need to or get on a cab or there's going to be buses going and, you know, you'll be able to get. So be in Arafat and make dua and participate in this ritual of Arafah. And then the third and the fourth of the Arkan of Hajj is the Tawaf al Ifada and the Sa'i. The Tawaf al Ifada and the Sa'i. The Tawaf al Ifada, it is done from after Arafah until any time you leave. So the time frame of the Tawaf al Ifada is after Arafah, after the night of Muzdalifah. You're going to go from Arafah to Muzdalifah. You cannot get to Mecca without going through Muzdalifah. So you're going to go from Arafat to Muzdalifah to Mina to the Haram in Mecca. And so any time after Muzdalifah, you can do the Tawaf al Ifada. And that is a Rukun, that is a necessary condition. You cannot, there is no Hajj without that Tawaf. Now, most of us will be doing in the very least three tawafs. Do not get confused. The first of them is going to be the tawaf of the Umrah when we come. That will take place as soon as we land in Jeddah. We will go to the Aziziyah Hotel. We will then do the tawaf of the Umrah. We're going to do the Sa'i of the Umrah. And then we will sh um, trim our hair and get out of Ihram. Then we will enter the city of Ihram. We're going to go to Mina, then Arafat, and then the Muzdalifah. And then at some point in time, we will do the tawaf al ifada Most likely, we will do it on the night of the 10th or the morning of the 11th. It depends on when the government gives us allocated slots because the government wants to allocate the group so that there's uh, crowd control. And we can go individually outside of the crowd control, but as a group, we will go at a particular time slot. That is the tawaf al ifada There is one final tawaf, and that is the Tawaf al wada the goodbye Tawaf. The Tawaf al wada is not to the same level of strictness as the Tawaf al ifada If for some reason you miss it, then it can be made up with a penalty. And women who have begun their menses after the Tawaf al ifada they are forgiven from doing Tawaf al wada the goodbye Tawaf. So, uh, and we'll get to the issue of menses very quickly uh, in a while as well. So that is the third Rukun. Once again, to enter the Hajj state in, in Haram, that's number one. Number two is to be in uh, Arafat on the ninth. Number three is the Tawaf al ifada And number four is the Sa'i. And the Sa'i, of course, can also be done anytime after the 10th. Remember, the Tawaf and the Sa'i of Hajj do not have to be linked together. You may separate them. So if you are very tired after the Tawaf, no problem. Go back to your uh, hotel in Aziziya. Go back to the, the, the place. And then next day or 12 hours or even before you leave for Medina, no problem. Just perform the Sa'i at any time. The Sa'i is an independent action uh, when it comes to the, 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 the Hajj season. And you may do the Sa'i at any time. It doesn't have to be done consecutively from the Tawaf and the Sa'i together. Having said that, logistically and for most of us, it's just easier. Once you're there, you do the Tawaf and then you go to the Sa'i. But it has happened, and I have done this myself, by the way, brothers and sisters, that for whatever reason, it takes you forever to get to the Haram, and it takes you, you know, sometimes 
uh, I've done so many Hajj. I mean, some of them I have bizarre stories. Some once it took me, I think, three and a half hours to do the tawaf. It was just so busy and it was season packed and whatnot. And I just said, you know what, I can't do this sa'i right now. So I just did my tawaf and then khalas came back to, and did the sa'i later on. But you need to do the sa'i. So those are the four things that are necessary. And I want you to memorize them because nobody can help you if you don't do these four things. Once again, the intention and the talbiyah and the ihram is not the cloth, it is a state. Number two, Arafah. Number three, Tawaf of Ifada. And number four, the Sa'i. Everything else we can work with. If you miss it, we can pay a kafara. You know, there are ways out, but those need to be done uh, for a person has to be accepted. Now, uh, very briefly, uh, uh, before I get to some of the Q&A, uh, just realize that uh, obviously, as you understand, we are going on an act of worship and uh, there is going to be tests and trials. And I have said many, many times in the lectures I give that be prepared psychologically and mentally. Hajj is a very difficult journey. And uh, the sacrifices that uh, we need to do, especially coming from the West, are uh, things that uh, we probably never have to face in our lives, typically speaking. The sheer quantity of people and the frustration and the long lines and the state of the, the you know, I mean, the food lines and then the restrooms are always, these are things that makes life difficult. And my point is, this is our jihad. This is what, you know, is going to, inshallah, uh, forgive our sins. Go with the right attitude and make sure we do not ruin our hajj because we're complaining about, generally speaking, first world issues. Because in the end of the day, alhamdulillah, our package, we called it an economy one. But allow me to be blunt and brutal here. We are still in the top 5% of the hajj packages of the world. Look at how other people do hajj. You know, there are people that still come to hajj from buses halfway across the globe, from Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, they're gonna take a bus without air condition in the summer months. There are people that do not have air conditioned tents, do not have air conditioned buildings, do not have food given to them. So while from the Western side, no doubt the package I'm giving is on the economic side, please allow me to be blunt here and remind me and you that wallahi, and I know this from experience because sometimes I've done hajj in a very different manner. We are in a luxury package compared to the hujaj of the globe. And it hurts me sometimes that, you know, we are so impatient that we even complain about, oh my God, I'm standing in line so long, unless you are elderly and sick. Otherwise, subhanAllah, okay, standing in line, Khalas, bismillah, tawakkal ala Allah, do dhikr, make Quran. That's the purpose of, the, of being there is to show Allah Azza wa Jal that you're willing to uh, sacrifice your comforts of this world for a few days in order to please Him. Uh, as well, my dear brothers and sisters, realize as well that uh, Hajj is also about making sure that you interact with your fellow Muslims in a positive manner. You know, there will be Muslims from across the globe. And one of the things that is so beautiful about Hajj, you see the diversity of the Ummah. But you see in that diversity, you also see some negative things. You might find the Haji who is impatient from another land. You might find the Haji who, uh, you know, might be pushing or shoving. And of course, it's very easy for you to react in a similar manner. Always be the better of the two and always try to use this as a learning moment for yourself and the other brother. Don't be frustrated at the people around you and thank Allah Azza wa Jal for the blessings that you have. Uh, I've also said logistically uh, to always have a number of things on your physical persona or body. Of them, always have water. It's very hot. We are going in the summer months. The number one cause of problems, of medical problems in Hajj is the lack of hydration. We are going in the month of July. Uh, 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 July and August. This is the hottest season uh, for Hajj. We are going in the hottest season of Hajj. I have done Hajj in all seasons. It is extremely hot and you can get dehydrated in less than half an hour being in the sun. So try your best to always be drinking lots of water. I also recommend all of you to have uh, packets of electrolytes. Uh, actually, I have purchased them myself right now that you add uh, electrolytes and these electrolytes, buy them from any health store or online or go to your local pharmacy station, whatever. These are over the counter electrolytes. What it does is, is it include it increases, you know, you, you give up a lot of salt, a lot of your necessary, uh, you know, fluid whatnot these electrolytes they help you overcome and it helps you inshallah battle the heat so make sure you have water a bottle of water all the time have a small canister and fill it up uh, number two always have some snacks some energy snacks anything that you like and gives you some energy you know trail mix nuts um, you know anything uh, that will help you do that and number three a little bit of cash you don't need a lot of cash 
because food there is very cheap. A bottle of water will cost you uh, 50 cents. That's two reals or one real even if you go to the right place. One real, two reals, you'll get a bottle of water. You know, a banana and apple will cost you two, three reals. Again, less than a dollar. So some amount of cash, have it on your physical body. These are the three things you should always have wherever you are. Water, some snacks, and some cash. And if you get lost, don't worry. Inshallah, we will meet up as well. Make sure that you memorize where our group is in Azizia, in the uh, in the uh, place that we're going to stay as soon as we, we get to Mecca. That building, uh, for me, that's a huge positive because, you know, almost all the other groups, without exception, they have to transfer uh, two or three times before Hajj because first they're going to go to the luxury hotels close to the Haram, then they're going to have to come to Mina, then they're going to have to come to Mina, uh, uh, the, the hotel uh, in Azizia. For us, I think psychologically and so, so much easier and I actually prefer this. That is your base. Wherever we are when we get uh, off the airplane, we're going to go straight to our temporary home that will be there up until the end of Hajj until we go to uh, Medina. Uh, and so that is going to be our room, you know, exactly where we are. As soon as we get there, acclimatize. As soon as we get there, take a note, where am I? How do I get here? Ask around. Make sure that that can be your meeting spot in case, worst case scenario, you lose the group. Don't worry. Per continue on the 8th, on the 9th, on the 10th, the morning of the 10th, come to the, the, the hotel or the building and inshallah ta'ala the rest of the group will be there. So don't panic. Make sure as well if you're with an elderly person, uh, even though we had said many times that I, I, I'm a bit hesitant to, you know, to make sure that every, because this is going to be a walking hajj. In case there's an elderly person, make sure they have a hand, a, a wrist, a, a wristband, some type of identification where they have their name and their group number and a telephone number and the address in Azizia. There's got to be that wristband that the guides, the Boy Scouts can look at it and say, oh, okay, this is where you need to go. Make sure that every person who uh, is elderly or a child, make sure that they have that wristband on them and that they can contact uh, the person uh, who is their point of contact. Uh, other logistical issues, uh, I think uh, Brother Bakr is going to go over more of them, uh, but pack light, especially when you're going to go for the actual Mina uh, experience from Aziziya. Just have a very light backpack. That is it. Don't have anything more than that, that you can put it on your back and the rest of the time your hands are free. Uh, I, I know many of you are asking about an umbrella. There's no problem having an umbrella. Uh, and and protecting you protecting yourself from the sun there is no kafara for that uh the what is kafara is if you cover your head with a uh, a covering with a turban or something a brother obviously the sisters who can wear the hijab no problem for the brothers there should be nothing on top of their head directly but if they have an umbrella that is fine uh that's uh, in the backpack of course you're going to have your basic uh, uh, items, uh, you know, some toiletry and whatnot, water, food, drink, stuff like that. And of course, a sleeping bag for Muzdalifah. Remember, in Muzdalifah, uh, there is no, uh, in fact, no, no package except for the very, very expensive $20,000 packages. No package gives you anything in Muzdalifah. And so we are not going to, there is no services in Muzdalifah other than the restrooms. There's, there's nothing, nothing that, that's going to be there. So what we need to do for Muzdalifah is make sure you have just a little bit of food and your water and a sleeping, a very thin sleeping you know, bag that you're able to uh, to go to sleep with and a pillow, whatever. That should be on your own person and you'll be able to then spend the night in uh, Muzdalifah. No, no, no worries about that. Um, with regards to shoe wear, uh, and again, this is uh, something that I've um, remarked upon many, many times that subhanAllah, our brothers, they get so concerned about the state of their shoes. No problem. Listen, brothers, far more important than what you wear is your psychological attitude toward, toward, in the hajj. Uh, I get the most common question is about shoe wear. What shoes are permissible or not? Look, don't worry. Insha'Allah ta'ala, the vast majority are permissible. And even if they are not and you make a mistake, it's a small kafara. The kafara is to feed six people. It's not the end of the world. Don't be obsessed over these minutia so much that you're worried about that. Far more important than the shoe is your spiritual state, your qalb as it's going into the hajj. Now, what is technically allowed? In my humble opinion, and again, remember, there's always going to be a diversity and we have, mashallah, in our package, Sheikh Abdullah Uduro, another graduate of Medina. Uh, we have an, a, a number of graduates of Medina that are going to be our guides with us, of the bus guides. Of course, in the same building, we'll have Sheikh Abu Isa, and there's like four or five of us in the same area. 
and perhaps in some issues all four or five of us will have different fiqhi positions so you have to choose who you feel the most comfortable uh, following and believe me from my side i have no problems if you don't follow somebody else i mean it's your hedge in the end of the day but if you ask me any footwear that is not fully covering the shoe uh the the the, the foot sorry any footwear that has straps on it and is open at some level so you're not going to call it a shoe what we call a sandal is completely permissible and i myself have a sandal that has a velcro strap at the back and it basically covers uh, the foot uh during the days of hajj i don't have a sock on outside of those the days of ihram i'm wearing a sock and that sandal and that's what i'm going to be wearing and walking in it's a walking sandal you know it's a sandal that you can walk in and a very long uh, uh, what do you call the walking company ones that have those it's a good sandal there it does the job uh if you have other uh walking types of, of sandals not a shoe not something that covers the entire foot that is something that should be avoided and again this is only for brothers the final point from me and then i'm going to open the floor for q a uh, and then remind you that once again don't sweat the small stuff don't sweat the small stuff don't become obsessed in the minutiae of what is and isn't allowed. Look at the broader picture. As long as you do these four things, the rest is going to be fine, inshallah ta'ala. The final point is the issue of uh, women's menses. And it's always very confusing. And a lot of sisters are uh, you know, asking questions about this. So I will uh, reiterate what I have said in uh, my online lectures. So we will be spending... Uh, around 10 days uh, in the city of Mecca. Uh, we will be arriving, most of us are arriving uh, around the 4th or so, uh, and then inshallah ta'ala we will stay there until, is it the 14th or so when we go to Medina. And so inshallah, inshallah, the vast majority of sisters will be pure in some of those days. Uh, if they are the, uh, their, their cycle is falling in those days, then they need to figure out what is the projected time of their cycle and most important time to be pure the most important time that if they are outside of their cycle inshallah everything is fine is from the 10th of the hijjah up until the time that we leave for medina from the 10th of the hijjah up until the time we leave for medina those four or five days if they are pure even for one day alhamdulillah they've gotten out of all of the ikhtilaf and controversy and they will have to they will do the tawaf al-ifadah during that time of purity so that is the most important thing that as long as they have at least those few hours from arafat up until we depart from medina where they are not in their monthly cycle then alhamdulillah no problem however from that time uh, to medina suppose they are in the state of their monthly menses suppose that it is projected that uh, she will be in her menses from the day before arafa until the day we are in medina that one week and uh, it is now too late, I think, as far as I know, to take any medication and, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to uh, to do anything. But by the way, feel free to talk to your gynecologist or doctor and see if anything can be done. But as far as I know, uh, it cannot be changed at this uh, the very the, the very late time. But Allah knows best what new developments have happened. Suppose that she is in her menses and she cannot, um, you know, uh, get out of that. What is to be done? It is the fatwa of Ibn Taymiyyah and also the fatwa of many scholars of our times, including Lajna Daima, including myself, this is the fatwa I will be giving, that in that case, if she genuinely is in the menses from the beginning of basically the, the day of Arafah up until we leave for Medina, there is no other alternative for her except that she uh, does tawaf in that state, even though that is not the ideal and it is not something that should be done or resorted to. And uh, it is something that is a type of darura. Her situation will be like the one who is able to do wudu, but is physically incapable. Suppose, I mean, giving you a bizarre scenario, suppose his hands are tied up, he's a prisoner, he doesn't have, you know, the capability to do wudu. What is he going to do? In that state, he's going to just pray as he is, you know, and, and, and pray, even though technically there is water and he should do wudu, but it's a type of darura. Similarly, if a woman is in her, her monthly cycle, uh, it's not good for her to do tawaf. She should never do tawaf outside of this time frame if she's in her cycle. But because it is hajj, because there's no alternative, because she 
she cannot delay the flight and, and it's impossible really almost to change her one flight and not the groups and what's not. So we say in her case, it is a darura and her hajj is accepted without any penalty. There is no kafara. Now, suppose uh, she uh, started her menses after she did tawaf al-ifadah. In this case, her tawaf al is forgiven. So suppose on the 10th, she did her tawaf al-ifadah. Then on the 11th, she started her uh, she started her menses on the 11th. She started her menses. Then her tawaf al wada, her farewell tawaf is forgiven, no problem. Suppose she's in her menses when she lands, and she will remain in her menses up until the eighth of Dhul Hijjah, right? So she won't be able to perform the Umrah. In this case, we say this is the ideal scenario where you do Hajj Qiran, Hajj Qiran not Hajj Tamattur. Hajj Qiran means you remain in the state of Umrah from the beginning of the, when you arrive up until after the 10th when you do your Tawaf, then you're going to get out of the state of Hajj. And of course, there are three types of, of Hajj, as you know, Ifrad, uh, Qiran, and Tamattur. And so the lady that will be in her menses when she arrives, and she strongly assumes that she will remain in her menses up until the 10th of the Hijjah. So that's the key. Uh, or sorry, I should say the 8th to make it easier to understand because once in the 8th and khalas, you have to go to Mina uh, from there so then the Hajj begins. So suppose, again, uh, scenario. Suppose she lands in Jeddah and it is the 5th day of her menses and she typically has 7-day menses. In this case, she will do Tamattur because after 2 days finishes, she will then do her, uh, ha, your, her Umrah and then she will do Tamattur. But suppose she's just beginning when she lands in Jeddah. And a whole week will go by and Hajj will begin, obviously. In this case, she should make the niyyah for Hajj Qiran, not Hajj Tamattur. And she should then, uh, you know, basically do everything in Dhikr Ibadah without doing uh, the, the Hajj, sorry, without doing the, the Tawaf. And she will do one Tawaf and only one Tawaf when she is pure. When she finishes uh, her menses and she takes the Ghusl, she will then do the Tawaf al ifadah uh, and she will then be free to then whatever she leaves do the tawaf al wada. If there are any other questions of a uh, personal nature, then inshallah feel free on the group and uh, Brother Bakr inshallah ta'ala will uh, forward it to me. Uh, so we have some questions over here. Can the shoe cover the heel? Uh, so the shoe may strap over the heel, but as I said, if you're going to cover the entire back, how will it? Uh, I can only imagine it being a full shoe. And I would say that that is makru. I will not say that that is breaking, but I'm saying it's going to be makru. It should be avoided. So what you want to do is to have some type of sandal type of thing, not a Nike shoe, not a full shoe, but some type of sandal or some type of, uh, you know, uh, just flip-flops or whatever it does it, as long as you're able to walk. And by the way, there are some really good walking flip-flops. You know, the walking company I actually have one downstairs. Uh, but I, in the hajj, I use the the um, the sandals because of the strap. But you're allowed to use a flip flop. That uh, actually, that's the ideal thing to use a flip flop as well. Uh, question: Do you recommend that we go to Mount Arafah on the day of Arafah? No, 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 no. If that wasn't clear, let me say it again. Do not go to Mount Arafah on the day of Arafah. If that wasn't clear enough, let me say this again. I have done oh, almost twenty hajjs, and I have never once in my life gone to the Mount of Arafah uh, as a point to go there. And in every group that I've gone, anytime somebody has gone to the Mount of Arafah, they have ended up regretting it for multiple reasons. Of them is that there was no benefit and they wasted four hours going back and forth. There is no benefit. You may stand anywhere in Hajj and it's considered the same. The Prophet said, on the day of Arafah, standing at Mount Arafah, this is an authentic hadith, my dear brothers and sisters. He said, I am standing at Arafah here, but all of Arafah is equal in terms of standing. He himself told us, I'm standing here. It happens I'm standing here, but in reality, the whole Arafah is equal in standing. No problem, inshallah. Is it okay for trekking poles? Uh, it's okay, but honestly, my dear brothers and sisters, it's a waste unless you have a problem walking. If you have a bit of a limp or an issue walking, otherwise, no, it's a waste of a hand. You don't need it. You're not going to be going up and down mountains and going in the Sahara Desert. Don't worry about it. General pads, walkways, you don't need a, a, a walking track. No, no problem. Can we wear surgical masks? So it is my uh, fatwa and Allah knows best that surgical masks may be worn, should be worn, but you have to pay a kafara. And remember, realize paying a kafara is not a, an issue. Uh, remember, I gave the hadith in my lectures that the man, the Sahabi, had lice in his hair. 
And the Prophet said, Subhanallah, why didn't you just shave and pay a kafara? Meaning, when there's a medical issue, do what needs to be done and pay a kafara. So if somebody has a high fever or somebody's worried about bird flu or whatever, some years it gets worse, I think they have it under control this year. But anyway, suppose it's bad or whatnot. I mean, I might have a mask on. I mean, I, I will bring a surgical mask right there. I will bring the mask with me. And then I'll play it by ear. If I want to wear it, I'll wear it. And if I will wear it, I will pay a kafara for that. No problem, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, by the way, somebody asked a question. I don't know if it's on this list, but on, on other lists, they asked a question about uh, spending the days or nights in the hotel rather than in Mina. And what is going to be the ideal? So you're going to, this is going to be a key discussion that all of the hujaj will be happening. And myself and Abu Isa have already had this discussion. And I know it's going to be a very big topic, but we're going to go over this again and again. So let me reiterate the wajib is to spend most of the night in mina on the 11th and 12th nights right so the 9th uh, the 10th 11th uh, and 12th nights so the 10th and 11th and 12th nights we're going to be in uh, mina and that means that basically half the night or so and half the night is basically from fajr from maghrib to fajr divide that by two that is the wajib if you do that wajib, then alhamdulillah, you are scot-free. Now, what do you plan to do? It is up to you. In fact, I don't know what I plan to do. Sometimes I spend the whole night in Mina, and uh, that's good. And sometimes I feel very tired and frustrated and sick, and I just feel like I need to go to sleep in a proper bed, for example. And in this case, I myself will spend half the night in Mina, which means from Maghrib up until around 11.30 or so, then I'm going to start walking to the Aziziyah building. And that walk will take at the very least 45 minutes. And throughout that walk, you are still in Mina physically. So you will get to the end of Mina around midnight time. You exit Mina, you will be in your uh, building by 12.30 and you sleep and pray Fajr and go back to sleep and sleep till Dhuhr time, alhamdulillah, solid 12 hours in an air-conditioned bed with your own bathroom. And it definitely, there's no doubt, it freshens you up. You take a shower, you change your clothes, and then the next day, maybe around before Asr time, I will leave back. I don't know, I might do this. I will leave back. I will do the Jamarat after Asr and then walk all the way back to the tents, be with the tent people, the tent people, that's a nice one. Be with the people of the tent, Ashab al Kahf there. Uh, be with the people of the tent and then maybe go back. Or maybe I'll spend the whole night in the tent. The point is, Alhamdulillah, you have your tent and you have a building. And between the two is the distance of, if there's no rush, 35 minutes. But because of the rush, maybe an hour or so. So it's up to you. You decide, you know, which one you want to do. And I will decide. I don't know what I'm going to do myself. It just depends on how I feel and how, you know, energetic or whatnot. And I will be honest with you. If I were to spend uh, the, the, the night in the building, and leave the tent after midnight, I will personally not feel guilty at all. I have done my wajib and I want to preserve my energy for other things that I need to do. So I am the type of person that, you know, I don't believe in putting a burden that is unnecessary on myself. And I believe this is a part of Islam. Allah has not made us uh, the difficult religion for us. The religion is easy for us. And where there is leeway i will take that leeway it is true that the sunnah is to spend the whole night in mina and that's why if i'm feeling energetic and good and everything is fine inshallah i plan to spend the whole night in mina but at the same time there is no penalty no kafara no sin if we spend half the night we've done our job and then we go and spend the rest of the half outside and spend the day in the the place and by the way the process in the daytime from mina he would walk to mecca and spend the days in the haram doing tawaf you know drinking zamzam and then going back to mina at night of course in those days rush was very small no big deal so if we had a hotel in mecca uh, definitely even in the Aziziya hotel definitely in the daytime you can go back and freshen up take a shower take a nap and then get back into mina during the evening but the the rami or the throwing should be done basically uh before sunset on the 10th and the 11th now the final question i'll do inshallah ta'ala uh oh sorry will there everybody be given a key for room in Aziziya? um so uh to be honest i am not 100 percent sure how that's going to happen all I know, and we are we are guaranteed this, inshallah, inshallah. That's what I have been told, and I will fight if that is not the case within my Islamic rights, inshallah. Those rooms are our rooms, which means we will have access to them. Now, I think 
we might have to surrender the keys at the desk downstairs. Uh, and the reason for this is because in case of an emergency, in case of a disaster, a flood, a fire, uh, that room will be used by more people for temporary shelter for the other groups that are part of our package, the broader package. And that's understandable. And if that happens, then we will sacrifice for everybody. If a natural disaster happens, then we are all brothers in Islam and we will help each other out. But in case that happens, they need access to the keys. And that's why, as from what I understand, we might have to leave the key downstairs. But the bags will be in the room and uh, you will leave your belongings in the room when we go for the days of Hajj, and you can go back at any time during uh, the days and the nights of Mina. Uh, and I plan to go back every day. The only question is, will you spend more than half the day or only just an hour or two you go back in and out? That will be fine. Uh, I forgot to mention, my dear brothers and sisters, a very important point. Uh, I keep on saying final thing, I keep on remembering this. Let's go back to the first days when we arrive. When we've done our Umrah, we have between three to four and a half days in uh, Aziziyah, before we go for the 8th of the Hijjah, we have the 5th, 6th, and 7th. We will be in the hotel. Now, my advice to you, my dear brothers and sisters, and this is just a personal advice. Keep your energy and maintain as precautious of a habit as possible. And do not, I repeat, do not go to the haram for long periods of time because you're going to expose yourself you're going to expose yourself to exhaustion to fatigue to viruses to go there and back is going to be a, a, a hassle this is my personal advice to you it's not a logistical sorry it's not a fiqh advice it's not a theological advice it's a logistical advice that once you've done the umrah you need to preserve your energy and you need to inshallah ta'ala try your best by the help of allah to be safe and not fall sick Everybody will fall sick during Hajj. It is a part of doing Hajj. I guarantee you, this is, we call it the gift of the Hujjaj. You will sneeze and wheeze and shuffle and, and, and cough. And that's the least of your worries. If you only cough and sneeze and feel a sore throat, if you only feel this, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most people will, you know, may Allah protect us all more than this, a fever or whatnot. So if that happens, you want it to happen after the 9th and 10th of the Hijjah. You want to do the big and the biggest issue, the most difficult day will be the 9th and the 10th. Those two days are really all that Hajj is. Those two days, actually, to be honest, it's a day and a half, will, will feel like three, four days for you. Okay? And I know, speak from experience again. You want to preserve your energy. You want to have you know, your full health when you get to the 9th and the 10th of the Hijjah. Those are going to be difficult days. My personal, humble advice as a brother I know wallahi it's so tempting and your iman is all time high and you want to and you want to and you want to and may Allah bless you for that enthusiasm and hey if you want to go nobody's gonna stop you go for it and uh, from what I understand we have two buses assigned for all 400 or 300 people you know at particular timing brother Bakr is gonna tell you and so if you want to go you may go uh, and just you know do tawaf and, and pray and do dhikr and whatnot and that's fine nobody's going to stop you but my humble advice to you is once you've done your umrah then try your best to just maintain your personal hygiene and safety and and, 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 and energy so that you preserve it up until you know the the ninth and tenth and of course you know there is no taking precautions from the qadr of allah but we take precautions in a sensible manner while we put our trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so uh, with that, inshallah ta'ala, I will hand it back to uh, Brother Bakr and I will see all of you inshallah ta'ala in around a week or so. And once again, I reiterate, please make dua to Allah from now that, oh Allah, make our hajj a hajj that is mabroor. Oh Allah, make our hajj a hajj that is easy. Oh Allah, Allah ma yassir alayna hajjana, oh Allah. Allah ma yassir alayna hadha al-hajj, oh Allah. We ask you, oh Allah, to give us a grant us an easy hajj and an accepted hajj. Oh Allah, any calamity that is decreed, we ask you to avert it away from us and from all of the hujjaj, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, grant us and all of the hujjaj a safe hajj and an accepted hajj, O oh Allah. Allow us to return with all of our sins forgiven, O oh Allah. Allow us to return with changed hearts. Allow us to return with repentance, O oh Allah. Allow us to return when we are closer to you, 
wanting to worship you the way that you deserve to worship oh Allah oh Allah we ask you that you make this a hajj and mabruran wa sa'yan mashkuran wa dhamban maghfuran bi rahmatika arhamar rahimin and with that I hand it back to uh, brother Bakr and I will see you all inshallah ta'ala next week wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and accept it, Hajj, O oh Allah. Allow us to return with all of our sins forgiven, O oh Allah. Allow us to return with changed hearts. Allow us to return with repentance, O oh Allah. Allow us to return when we are closer to you, wanting to worship you the way that you deserve to be. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. One second, let me just make sure everything is working. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, everyone. Uh, so, with what Sheikh Yasir Qadi mentioned and all of the different uh, uh, logistical questions you guys have in regards to whether everybody's getting a key for your uh, individual rooms, I'll find out for you guys. And as far as power outlets go in the Mina camps, I will also find that out. Um, I think some of you may have had other questions and one of the things that I'm going to try to do is add one more section in the itinerary and it'll be towards the bottom of the itinerary and it'll be frequently asked questions because a lot of the questions that we, uh, we've we we've been asked so far are kind of repeat like Sheikh Yasser Qadi said around the shoes like he mentioned um, in regards to some of the sisters and covering their face and if the sisters can wear those masks. We're, I'm going to get uh, a summary from all that from Dr. Yasser Qadi. I'll put that in frequently asked questions toward the bottom of the itinerary so you guys could uh, reference them. Do you need to bring power adapters? Yes. And we've even suggested one in the, in the itinerary for the uh, packing list. So if you go to there, if you go there, we've suggested one. It's uh, a travel adapter. There's a link for it. You could find that there. I believe it's, uh, I don't care where you buy it from. We were just trying to make it easy if people had Prime. The reason we suggested the one in the link is because it has four USB ports uh, in addition built into the power adapter, which is quite unique. You know, uh, I myself, and thank you for reminding me, have to actually grab one. And uh, the good news is, is we, for those who are Prime members, at least have the ability to get it relatively quickly. So, yes. All right. Any other questions? I think most of it will be covered there. Other than that, I don't think uh, it's really too complicated. Again, please be re very respectful in the WhatsApp groups. Uh, limit the questions to logistics or FIP related, and then you can let me know. Should we pay the credit cards even with 0% before we leave? I'll again get you that answer uh, from Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Okay, brother Sayyid is saying, what do you suggest? I'm guessing you posted a question above somewhere which i'm trying to go through it i don't see i'm not sure what your question is but it's bringing sunblock okay i'll also ask sheikh yasir qadi as well in that regard and we'll put that we'll put that in the frequently asked questions okay how much money should we bring as a rule of thumb if you're a person who doesn't care much about uh, shopping for souvenirs and gifts and stuff like that what I would say is uh, if you brought maybe twenty or thirty dollars a day, uh, so twenty dollars a day in cash uh, handy, you all should have these little AirLink badges that you were sent. At least I think you do. I could double check if uh, they sent that everybody or if that was just for group leaders, but you should have that in your pocket. So uh, if you're there for call it uh, ten days, even ten dollars a day, call like two hundred dollars in cash, you should be fine. Inshallah. And uh, if you have a, a debit card where you can uh, that would be helpful if it allows to be withdrawn in um, Saudi Arabia. Usually sometimes you have to call your bank, your bank in advance so they know that you're in that country. Okay, so if you brought two, three hundred bucks, uh, if you want to be safe, maybe three, four hundred, it's up to you, but that's more than enough. I would recommend having them in twenty dollar uh, denominations. And then you once we get to the airport. First thing I always do, I go to the exchange to the Sarraf. I exchange at least $100 uh, so that I have Saudi Riyadh with me, uh, which makes it a lot easier when you're uh, grabbing some stuff. 
when will you get your wristbands? I'll have to clarify that with um, Dar es Salaam once we, uh, with Airlink once we reach Azizia. I would suggest at least a few hundred dollars as a bare mineral. So Sheikh Yasser Qadi just answered that for us. He said a couple hundred bucks. So, you know, four or five hundred, I guess, should be enough. Um, okay. So I think sunblock is allowed. Just don't get the perfumed one. Okay. So, Brother Muhammad, do you see that sunblock is allowed? Just don't get the perfumed one. And I'll also tally up all these answers for the most part and try to, again, review that real quick with Sheikh Yasser Qadi and then post them. Uh, at the bottom of the itinerary so we can all have that handy answer to if if islamic uh, will if possible please do that for him answer to i'm not sure i'm not sure what you mean there okay but so we're a little bit over the time now but uh again i'm in every one of your whatsapp groups so please just uh ping me you could just if you've never used whatsapp before you just hit the at sign fragrance free Okay, uh, so um, you can hit the at symbol and then write my name, B-A-K-R, it's spelled like, well, it's always recommended, not just for head, so yes, it's all good. Oh, an Islamic will, oh, that's what you meant. Okay, so yes, Sheikh Yasser Qadi answered that for you guys. Um, so Sheikh Yasser Qadi, he's still able to see, so he can uh, respond to any of the questions here in regard to perfumed clothes. One of the other things that somebody uh, wrote, since you're still on, is that if their ihram clothing gets dirty, are they allowed to change their ihram clothing? Uh, somebody asked that, uh, so maybe if you want to answer that. They said if they're allowed to change ihram, if the original gets soiled or dirty, also will they be going to ziyaras during the hajj or during the days before hajj? Okay. So the answer is we don't have that in the itinerary as far as the ziyadas go, okay? Just wash your ihram, Sheikh Yasser Qadi said, and you do not have to uh, change them. You don't have to be that strict, okay? Any other uh, last minute questions? Anybody wants to uh, type in? Uh, regarding the credit cards, even if they're 0%, he said it is not necessary for hedge, but it's always recommended or good to pay off all your debts, okay? And yes, you can change your haram if you want it. Okay, he says that, all uh, right. Yeah, of course, there's a haram you can purchase in, in uh, over there, just in case, yes, there are. Okay, all right. Uh, again, let's continue in the WhatsApp group, and uh, if anything else, may Allah accept this from us. Please make dua for everyone. Please make dua that Allah Azza allows us to uh, have a safe Hajj, one that is uh, pure, uh, beneficial to us, purifying for us, and that we go and we come back in a state that we a uh, better state, come back in a better state than we uh, left our homes. Bismillah. Jazakumullah khair for your patience. Sorry for the technicality in the beginning, um, and may Allah Azza wa Jal allow all of us, uh, all of our Hajj, to be accepted. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.